the Upper Pitt River is a microcosm of British Columbia. It's simultaneously civilized and wild, inviting and inhospitable. There's a large logging operation with a permanent camp located here, but it has no road access and can only be reached by water. The Upper Pitt drains into Pitt Lake, which is also fed by the Fraser River from the shorter Lower Pitt River, and it is said to be the largest tidal lake in the world. Pitt Lake is home to the small community of Williams Landing with over 30 cabins, and similar vacation homes are dotted around the lake. Party boats share the lake with canoes and kayaks, but in a matter of just a few minutes, a storm can whip up the fjord-like lake into a profusion of wind-powered swells and breaking waves, making it a treacherous expanse instead of a placid vacation spot. The upper pit is only several minutes by powerboat from some of the vacation cabins, but the river's habitat supports grizzly bears and packs of wolves. The river itself is only accessible by canoe or small jet boats, but the steelhead fishing attracts anglers from around the world. Brandon and Cale each paddled solo, and together they launched their canoes from Grand Narrows, where the lower Pitt River empties into Pitt Lake. Their first camp was on Pitt Lake at Raven Creek. So the the kindling 
is cedar shakes from uh, the roof of my dad's old shed that we knocked down and built a new one. So dry cedar shakes. So we'll see how good it works. Works pretty good. Nope. <laughs> the water, like, uh, I'm kneeling in the canoe, so the water, like, my knees get wet, and then I stand yeah. up, and then it drips down into the boot. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they'll dry out. If it's sunny for the next, like, three or four days, maybe they'll dry out. But I brought lots of dry socks. It rained hard all night, but in the morning, only a high mist greeted the canoeists. The clouds hung around like revelers reluctant to go home after the party had ended. Cale and Brandon headed north and paddled towards their intended camp that night at Vickers Creek. Along the way, they passed some evidence of messages left on the cliffs by ancient Catesy residents, and also spied a tree not often seen this far from the ocean. <sighs> These are 4,000 year old pictographs on this wall. These red lines. That crescent and dot. I think that's a skull. There's an Arbutus tree up there too. Just north of Raven. The paddlers continued north. Cousin Point.
the witch's hat cabin. And Osprey Creek. In the afternoon, they landed at Vickers Creek and set up their camp. From this location, it was just a short paddle to leave the lake and begin their adventure on the upper Pitt River. The next morning was pretty cold. Brandon and Kale left the lake and began portaging, poling, lining, and ferrying their canoes in their attempt to push their way upstream on the upper Pitt River. Thank you. 
In the evening, they arrived at a gravel bar where a few buffalehead ducks were swimming in the current. So they named this camp Buffalehead Bar. Oh yeah. Yeah, the square ones are easier to like build with for sure. The next day, Brandon and Kale carried on upstream. There could be gold in those, like, uh, gravel on the banks. Yeah. It's like rusted. Yeah. That means there's iron in it, and iron is heavy, like gold. So when it it like deposits in the same place, it would be pretty hard to get over there and like 
dig a sample out. That's where the current is. These two adventurers had heard the legend of Slumac's lost gold and had studied the stories. So having found a likely place, they stopped to do some prospecting. <clears throat> Lots of black sand in the pan. No gold in the pan. Just black sand. Oh shit, I just spilled water. Brandon and Kale arrived at a place where many braids of the river met each other. They dubbed the spot the Confluence and made camp there for the night. Morning brought the familiar chore of packing up camp. They headed upstream. It was an especially cold morning, but the skies were still clear. For now.
What's it called? Cotard. C O T A R D. Cotard, huh? Camp that night was made near the logging camp called Alvin. Near their camp, on the sandy beaches, they found tracks from the resident herd of Roosevelt elk, and, more concerning, tracks that were likely made by a cougar on the prowl. As Brandon made supper, it began to rain. As the clouds collapsed overhead in the morning, something was visible to the north. Tons of smoke in that valley, which I think is Corbold Creek. Yeah, lots of smoke up there. I guess maybe they're burning slash. I don't know. With threatening weather coming, Brandon and Kale turned around and paddled back downstream.
In just a few hours, they covered water which had taken them days to travel upstream. They arrived back at Bufflehead Bar, where they decided to make camp. It began to pour rain. The rain continued in a deluge. It's getting stormy. The wind blew down our shelter, so we put it back up and made it a little bit more skookum. But it's uh, getting very windy, and the river just keeps coming up. And there's more and more debris in the river. Big logs floating down it and the rain is not stopping. But we got the shelter anyway. All this firewood, so we're good. The rainstorm set in hard, and the canoeists stayed put on Bufflehead Bar and watched the river rise as it blew out deadfalls and other riverbank debris. continued to rain hard. The rainstorm was locked into the river valley and showed no sign of relenting any time soon. Still raining hard, but we don't have any extra days left, so we have to pack up and paddle down the river, which is still pretty high. Uh, the rain. Maybe we get to Osprey today. We'll put the tarp up and lay a big fire and dry out again. With consideration given to their dwindling supplies and the unfortunate real life pressure of their schedules, they reluctantly left the swollen upper pit and made for the calmer expanse of the lake to shelter that night beneath the protection tendered by the big leaf maples and red alders at the Osprey Creek camp.
Osprey Creek, or which we're <clears throat> we'll camp there tonight. With the evening darkness, a hailstorm arrived. The morning brought more rain. Cale and Brandon returned to Grant Narrows in a pounding rainstorm. The most authentic and sincere weather Pit Lake and the rivers that nourish it have to offer.